What up players, it's Wolboss today up in this mode. Today we're painting up this halberdier from Sterland. And just base coats and washes. As you can see, the washes are still drying. The colors that you're gonna need are as follows. Dry at Bark. Agrax Earthshade. Lead Belcher. Averland Sunset. Steel Legion Drab, Seraphim Sepia, Skaven Blade Dinge, Bugman's Glow, Adabadon Black, Castellan Green, and Mournfang Brown. Now, as always, you want to make sure you prime your model first. So when we first start this video, I have just primed my model in Duplicolor Matte Gray Primer Coat. So it has a very gray look, almost like the uh, sprues that all these models come on. And then I had let it dry for a little while. So uh, stay tuned, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Alright everybody, so we're gonna get started painting our State Trooper from Stirland, the Grand County of Stirland, and uh, taking into account that this is a poor country or province of the Empire, we're gonna kind of take that into account through the way that we paint the uniform. We're not gonna use a lot of crisp, bright green and yellows, we're going to try to keep the colors muted. Since green and yellow are the two colors of Sterling, we're gonna go for a more uh, muted kind of tone. And we're also gonna add in some browns. So we're gonna start with that. <clears throat> and the first color we're gonna use is Steel Legion Drab. When you think about Sterling Troopers, uh, the image that comes to my mind more often than not are troopers that do not necessarily have the funds in their county's um, treasuries to provide the best uniforms. Even in the books and the fluff, it says that most Sterling troopers only have little um, references to their colors of green and yellow and uh, are not like a troop, trooper from, say, Altdorf, one of the richer provinces, or Rakeland, where the county pays for the entire uniforms of their, of their state trooper garrisons. It's a heavily forested area also. When you think about the fluff of the army, they are located right on the edge of Sylvania where all the vampire counts come from. So, very superstitious people, uh, almost thought of as backwater people, living in the, the boonies, and uh, almost like cut off, or they feel like they are not a part of the rest of the empire because the rest of the empire is going forward into a very scientific and uh, like a new age almost, led by Karl Franz. The Emperor, yeah, it's me! And, uh, oh, hello, Karl Franz. What are you doing? Oh, boss, why are you talking about Sterling? I love Sterling. They have the best pies. Uh, I was talking about how people from Sterling are often looked down upon by the other provinces as being kind of backwards and uh, very rural. Yeah, yeah, that is true, yeah. So, uh, we're going to kind of reflect that in the uniforms here. And again, the, um, the, what's it called, Uniforms and Heraldry book that Games Workshop produces for the Empire is very helpful in suggesting colors. 
So the next color we're going to use is actually, surprisingly enough, if I can find it here. Gonna be Castellan Green for the sleeves. Um, now, a mark of a more wealthy province could possibly be that their uniforms are all in quarters. So, if you see a lot of my other Empire tutorials, uh, their uniforms are more often than not quartered into four separate sections and mostly containing the uniforms of uh, the colors of the, the state trooper uniforms. So if, say, Sterling was a rich company with lots of money, then maybe their uniform would be this guy's right arm and left leg would be all in green, and the left arm and the left leg would be all in yellow. But it's not the case here. So we're going to take our Castellan green now, and we're also going to paint the insides of the slashes. Now obviously your troop, trooper, your state trooper might look different from mine and uh, the arms might be different or you might be using a different uniform with the legs and if that's so then you just kind of try to uh, get around the kind of do the same uniform colors where you can and that, that should be fine. Okay, the next color we're going to put on is Averland Sunset. The Averland Sunset is going to be the sleeves and the shirt that we can see under the armor. So if we zoom in here, I'm going to start with his armor underneath. Or not the armor, but the, the, the top. Everland Sunset is a tricky color because it's very bright and you're going to probably find some benefit in using a wet palette or else it might go on too thickly So uh, don't worry if your Averland Sunset looks really streaky to begin with. Like I'm using a wet palette and it still seems like my Averland Sunset is coming on really bright and streaky. So uh, just try not to put too much paint on your brush and uh, let it dry. Maybe we'll do a couple of thin coats. What I'm trying to do is keep the the green in the slashes here on the sleeves, but looks like my paint is running a lot. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back in later with the Castellan green and just hit the hit the insides of the slashes. <clears throat> so our guy here, the yellow is really really bright and vibrant. And we're going to want to tone that down in just a second, but 
Uh, let's gonna go. Let's go back to the Castellan Green. What we're gonna do now is paint the slashes in his trousers. Okay, so we get something that looks like that. Uh, why don't we go to the skin next? We'll let the yellow continue to dry. For the skin, we're gonna thin down some Bugvin's glow. Oh, speaking of dwarfy things, all the new dwarfs are really being discussed on all the forums as the new hotness. I'm also, uh, in case you haven't noticed, I'm using a guy who has bare feet. I think this this body type is perfect for Sterland. Really interesting design for the Empire kits I found. So much different variety of of looks. Okay, Bugman's Glow is also a very thick paint, so you're gonna, again, want to make sure you have a wet palette around. And a lot of people forget the uh, back of their heads. They have these little, because of the way they're they're sculpted, they've got little necks that you're gonna want to paint. Right there. Okay, next we're gonna take oops, Mornfang Brown. I know my label's all messed up, but Mornfang Brown is gonna be the color we use to paint the leather straps and the wood. Hello! The Wood of the Halberd. <clears throat> After you're done painting the wood of the halberd, you're going to want to get the pouches and any of these little belts or straps along his back. Uh, they don't have to be extra weapon sheaths. We're gonna paint that in a different color, but for like the straps holding his armor to his body. For the pouches, belts, any hanging purses and whatnot. all the way to the front. Right, now we're gonna paint the silver pieces, so we're gonna use lead belcher for that. I can find 
China. Where is Lead Belcher. So that's gonna go for the weapon head, um, his his chest plate. Again, we're gonna turn the model in a variety of different angles to make sure that we get all of the different sides of the model. Okay, and then when we get to the back here, if you want to paint anything in silver, then this is also the place to do it. All right. Now, your model should have uh, a lot of different brown parts to it. Cloth, leather, hats, different, um, just different materials. So. In general, I like to use Steel Legion Drab, my Mornfang Brown with the ripped off label, and also Dryad Bark is great. Uh, what you want to make sure you do though is when you are painting the model, you don't want to keep anything too close together. So uh, if I had, if you had shoes, I would paint them Dryad Bark because it'd be a nice dark brown. Um, if I painted Dryad Bark for the pants, the brown might be a little bit too dark. But for the hat, it could be just right. So you can see a lot of very earthy colors, right? We're not, this guy isn't bright and ostentatious. He could be like a farmer or somebody that just happens to be called up to fight for the emperor's armies. And um, yeah, that makes it look really, really cool. The exact same model, if I painted him up from, say, somewhere like Talibheim or Nome or, or Bogenhafen, the richer, more cosmopolitan towns, we could make him look more wealthy by making the different colors stand out more. The green could be like a bright emerald green instead of this drab muted color. The uh, brown pants could be replaced completely by bright yellow leggings. So um, yeah, just use your imagination. If you have this figure and you're doing an army that is supposed to be wealthy, then don't be discouraged just because he has bare feet. Something you can also do is uh, take some green stuff and just convert him, give him some shoes. It's all up to you. As you can see, I'm repainting his top in Averlin Sunset, I'm trying to cover the streaks of the first coat. All right. Next we're going to take some Let's See if we can find the Cadian flesh tone. And this is going to be the highlight to the skin. So when we're highlighting, we're going to focus on doing single strokes and widening them to uh, cover the highlighted area. So for the hand, I'm going to 
just feather a bunch of single strokes along the back of the hand and then when I feel like it's covered well I'm going to pull the strokes down to the fingers. Same thing for this hand over here. Lightly feather the back of the hand and then single strokes lightly going down each finger. Remember when you're highlighting, you want less paint on your brush than you think you need. That's because you don't want to completely swamp the uh, paint of the coat that's underneath it. In this case, Bugman's Glow. Now we're going to get the face next, nose, cheeks, bottom lip, and finally the neck. Forgot to paint the uh, little weapon in his hat. He's got a little knife or a dagger or something, so I'm gonna go back to my lead belcher and just tag that right now. Okay. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some Skaven Blight Dinge and I'm gonna paint his facial hair. So if you decided to prime with white or black, anything other than gray, then this is where you'll kind of see what our guy is going to look like when we finish his beard. We don't want him to look too old, he's not going to be a decrepit old man, but he is going to have a little bit of facial hair here. We're also going to get his upper lip. There we go. So you should see a little bit of skin from his lower lip, but other than that, should be it. Uh, we're going to next take some Abaddon Black, and we're going to paint all of the scabbards, doodads, things that are strapped to his, his uniform that uh, I have no idea what they are. I don't know what this is. It looks like a coffee thermos. His wife packed him a coffee thermos. Okay. I think that's it. We're going to take the black now and we're going to Paint in horizontal lines for his eyeballs. Alright, you can also see that I painted up a couple more layers of yellow on his sleeves there. So I think one or two more should do it. Trickiest color to paint yellow, yellow and white. Trickiest colors to paint. You can either paint the comet on his chest plate there, you can either paint it in gold or leave it in silver. I'm going to just leave it in silver, I think, because it will show. Uh, it'll show up nicely when we add our 
Nikila Oxide Technical Paints for the weathering part of this tutorial. All right, so there our guy is. I'm gonna fix up his eyeball, add some of that black paint under his eye, and I'll just take some Cadian flesh tone and just touch up right under his eyeball where the bags of his eyes would be. So now you should look like this. Okay, the last step in our opening part of this video is we are going to hit this guy up with some washes. So we're going to take Reiklin Flesh Shade first of all. <clears throat> And we're going to paint all of the skin areas. Some people like to thin down their shades. Frankly, uh, I think it's okay if you don't. As long as you kind of just move it around the area. But, I mean, there are some foundation paints, paints that you you really do want to want to thin some base paints. I mean, I guess they're called now base paints, right? Do you really do want to thin? But for washes, I think you're okay. All right, the next shade we're going to take is Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to paint this on most of the model. The wood, the pants, the uh, silver metal. Any of the brown parts like the leather pouches, packs. Try to not get any of it on the yellow though, because I've noticed that Agrax Earthshade on yellow is really hard to highlight back up. So we're going to try to avoid the yellow parts. While getting it on the breastplate, the hat. green of the sleeves. Oh, green sleeves. I used to play that in high school band. And yeah, everything else on the back. Okay, and for the yellow, we're actually going to shade it with Seraphim Sepia. Alright, and there you have it for part one. Join us for part two when we get into the highlighting and we do some fine detail work like adding technical paints such as rust and um, verdigris to the silver parts. Thanks for watching everybody. Hope you have a great day. See you in the next video.